Right, okay, it's been established. The book buying ban isn't going to work. Don't judge me. I've been really, really good. I have seen several books in like secondhand shops that months ago I would have just definitely picked up because well, I might as well, it's cheap. But I've been, I've actually been really restrained. <laughs> the lighting's going really weird. Here are all the physical books that I picked up in the month of February and there are a lot of ebooks as well. <laughs> there was a really great book sale locally. Um, there's a really beautiful bookshop that has like staircases that are filled with books and so many shelves that are just filled with gorgeous books and the most beautiful children's section and they decided to have like a clearance sale of books that had been sitting around for a while and not really selling and all the paperbacks were 50p. I know a lot of people that went a little bit crazy in there, I, I tried to be a little bit restrained and I only ended up getting three books, the first of which was Every Man by Philip Roth. As far as I'm aware, this book begins with the funeral of the protagonist and then the rest of the book chronicles his life up until his death. I don't know a huge amount about this book other than I have really enjoyed the work by Philip Roth that I've read before and this is quite short so I should be able to do it quite quickly. The next book I got was a poetry collection called Imagine Sons by Carrie Etter. I went into that book sale with the intention of picking up some poetry collections and I have never heard of this collection before and it really really appealed to me which was exactly what I was looking for. Imagine Sons is like a collection of prose poems which reflect on a birth mother who gave up her son when she was 17 and it is the imagined experiences that she has with him now in his team. I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think I may do it over the next couple of days. It sounds like exactly what I'm into. And the final book I got in that book sale was a non-fiction book called Here We Stand, Women Changing the World. This is a book filled with interviews and articles about seven key British women campaigners and the campaigns they've run and how they want to change the world. And it was published by Hono, which is a publisher's, which is like 10 minutes walk away, that's amazing. So moving on from that book sale, the next book I got was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Mandel? Mandel? Don't know a huge amount about this book other than I know it was a pretty big deal a couple years ago. I think it came out in 2014 and started to get big in 2015, possibly. It's a sci-fi novel which follows, I think it's slightly apocalyptic-ish after a swine flu pandemic has broken out. On the same night that this pandemic breaks out, a actor in King Lear dies on stage. And then 20 years later, we follow the story of a girl named Kirsten, I believe, um, who is performing Shakespeare on stage. And we see how the world has changed after that pandemic, I think. I have two very nice pink books. <laughs> First, I have this tiny little essay. It's like 60 pages long, 80 pages long. Um, and I read this in an afternoon, I read it on Valentine's Day, and it is Henry Miller's The World of Sex. Henry Miller wrote quite explicit novels which were sort of scandalous for his time. In this literary manifesto he discusses why he does that. He discusses that because sex is so core to what we do, because it is as necessary as bread or work or play, then it should be central to literature as well. I don't agree with everything he says in this essay, not by any means, but it is definitely worth reading. And the final physical book I got this month was Mistakes in the Background by Laura Dockerell. You can see that there. This book comes with stickers and wrapping paper. The wrapping paper is just on this like inner sleeve. I open it up. This is what it looks like. It's just got some illustrations and some words. <laughs> I don't think I want to use this as wrapping paper. I kind of want to like frame it and use it as a poster. And then here are the stickers. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them because I have commitment issues. Like what if I stick them in one place and then I find a better place for them? I can't commit to stickers. How many books do you know that come with stickers and wrapping paper? It's sort of difficult to define what this book is. It's like, it's a poetry collection <laughs> but it is also full of illustrations and doodles and it is absolutely wonderful. Some of what's in here are like short stories, um, a lot of them are 
like narrative poems, which is what I probably enjoyed the most. And then you've got almost <gasps> the paper cup. Then you've got like just little doodles, really. It was really great, and after reading it, I got a massive creative burst to write some poetry, which was awesome. What I will say is that some of it is quite difficult to read because of like it's written on top of pictures. Um, and I found even some of it was quite difficult to read, so if you have any sort of reading difficulties, some of this may be quite challenging. On to the ebooks. The first book I got was Cruel Summer by Juno Dawson, published under the name James Dawson. This book follows the story of a group of friends who, in an attempt to sort of get over it and move on from one of their friends death the previous year they go and stay in a Mediterranean villa but then a new guest arrives and claims to have more information about their friends death that proves that it was murder not suicide as they previously thought and that new guest is killed and it's apparent that is one of the people in the friendship group that is doing the killing. Sounds very tense. Very much looking forward to giving this a go and seeing what it's like. I have never read any of Gina Dawson's work and I definitely want to get into anything that she writes. I am so looking forward to trying out some of her work. The next book I got was Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. The book follows the romance between two people named Lou and Will. Lou has recently lost her job and then as far as I can understand she gets a job where she is a carer for Will in some sort of capacity. Will is confined to a wheelchair. And yeah, the story follows the romance that begins to blossom between the two. You've probably seen the trailer for the film that's about to come out with um, Sam Claflin and Amelia Clark. I really wasn't interested in this book and then I watched the trailer and it made me cry a little bit. <laughs> so I thought I should probably give it a go. Lauren from Lauren in the Books has expressed like similar opinions about this book that I'm going to in that like the whole fluffy romance genre doesn't really appeal to me but that film trailer just totally drew me in so I thought I better give the book. I'm worried about it being very problematic. Obviously I don't know exactly what happens so it may not be like this but if Lou is going into this as a carer for someone in a wheelchair with reduced mobility She's in a position of power, which could be an issue. <laughs> Hopefully it will be good. Hopefully it will be decent. Next I got How Hard Can Love Be by Holly Bourne. I am such a massive Holly Bourne fan. I have full reviews of two of her books already, The Manifesto of How To Be Interesting and Am I Normal Yet? And I will link those down below in the description. But this is the second in the Normal series. The first one being Am I Normal Yet? This one follows Amber as she flies over to California to spend the summer with her mother. Her mother has really struggled with addiction and to say the mother-daughter relationship is messy is quite a bit of an understatement. There are a lot of unresolved tensions and conflicts there. As part of that summer, Amber needs to work at a summer camp which is run by her mother and her partner. She begins to make friends with the other American teenagers that work there, including a particularly strong bond with a boy named Kyle. I won't go into too much detail other than that because I'm probably gonna do a full review on it. I absolutely love this book and I will just continuously talk about it if I don't stop myself. Next up, I got another book by Laura Dockrell, a book that I have wanted to read for the longest time and everyone I've heard speak about this book absolutely loves it. I got Lorelei by Laura Dockrell. This book begins when a 16 year old boy named Rory finds a naked girl washed up on the beach. Turns out this young woman is a mermaid who has fled from the sea. She has given up being a mermaid and given up being a princess. The whole premise of this book just sounds awesome. Obviously if you are in any way interested in The Little Mermaid you will absolutely love this book. I'm certain I'm already gonna love this book. Next I got Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon, another book that everyone absolutely loves if they've read. It tells the story of Maddie, a girl who is allergic to everything. Her mother has built this protective bubble around her and Maddie has not left the house in all of her 17 years. But things start to change when Ollie moves in next door. Ollie manages to get his IM address to Maddie and they begin to talk online 
and things start to change from then on. And finally I got What We Left Behind by Robin Talley. This book is about a young couple named Tony and Gretchen who were the envy of their entire school. They were the amazingly in love couple, the unbreakable couple. And when they move off to different colleges, they are certain that their relationship will remain rock solid. But as Tony's eyes are opened up to a wider world, they begin to question a lot of things, including their gender identity. And Gretchen is trying to work out who she is outside of their relationship. Who is she as an individual? And obviously these things put a strain on their relationship. I'm really looking forward to seeing some representation of different gender identities and maybe some gender fluidity. So I have got a lot of books that I am very, very excited to read. <laughs> Lots of books that I think will need to have a full review because I think they're going to be absolutely amazing. I've already read a lot of books this month that I will have to do full videos on because they've been so incredible. A lot of the books I spoke about I have already read so there will be more info on those when I do my February wrap up. Not sure if this will go up before or after that. If you have any thoughts or opinions or questions about these books please be sure to leave them in the comments and we can have a little chat about them.